This photo was not that unique and it's not shot in the style that I typically go for, which is colorful, minimalistic photos of nature and wildlife. However, there's something special about this photo and it's where this story begins. It's the story of discovery and possibilities. And it's based on a mistake that nearly led to one incredible photo. Hey, it's Brian, welcome to One Perfect Shot, where I strive to capture just one perfect shot. Pictures of dragonflies, bees, ladybugs, birds of prey, or perhaps the moon rising over the Denver skyline. If you're into photography, consider subscribing. And over the last few days, I've set my sights on butterflies with the goal of, well, one perfect shot of a butterfly. And as mentioned, this type of a shot is usually the thing I strive to avoid. It's based on flash photography and basically what happens is when you're shooting close up or macros, the flash illuminates the subject but renders the background completely black or dark. The light falls off and that's how you get that effect. Now several days ago I found myself in a butterfly pavilion and I began to capture both photos and videos. It was really an amazing experience and I want to share more about this because if you're a photographer there's something really special and unique about butterfly pavilions that allows us to capture really cool images. Why? Well, the atmosphere is humid. Butterflies love hot and humid. So what you get is you get all this mist, <laughs> which makes it really challenging for the photographer. I gotta tell you, my flash continued to overheat. It was, I was just absolutely sweating, but I came away with some beautiful shots and it was just so much fun. Now, when I'm shooting photos or video, whatever, one of the things I'm always thinking about is I've got my subject, but I want to add one additional element to make the shot special. It's not just a bird in flight, but a bird of prey with prey. Poor bunny. It's not just a photo of the moon, but a photo of the moon rising over a stationary subject. It's not just street photography of holiday lights, but that combined with a comical element. This horse, it was just so magical when I captured that photo. And in this case, what I was not expecting was the mist. And what I ended up capturing was not just a photo of a butterfly, but a photo of a butterfly with this crazy mist in the background. This photo is a great example. Now, it's hard to really pick up on the mist, but if you slowly zoom in, you can start to see the detail. And again, it created such a cool photo. And on my first day, I really shot with a low aperture in order to let a lot of light into the camera to get those colorful backgrounds. ISO 100, f2.8, and a shutter speed of 1 over 50. ISO 200, f3.5, and a shutter speed of 1 over 60. Now this photo isn't really that great of a photo, but it's the background and it's the possibility. And what happened when I was in Lightroom and I hit the auto edit button was really magical. Bam, an incredible background, nearly black with amazing and different bokeh and these star-like features created by the suspended mist in the air. So the following day, I headed back to the Butterfly Pavilion with the goal of shooting something similar to this. I would shoot at apertures between 5.6 and f16. And I also positioned myself accordingly, waiting for the mist to fall and hoping I would have a butterfly well-framed and everything would be perfect. How silly of me. I actually got a lot of similar photos, backgrounds with a lot of color. Now in this photo, you can actually see a little bit of that mist that I spoke about. And this one butterfly was so amazing. He just sat perched on his leaf and just chilled. And I snapped and I waited and I snapped again. And I almost captured it. Again, the mist was there, but it just wasn't quite right. And I just hung out. And this photo, again, more mist, but it wasn't quite the thing I was looking for. However, I did walk away with what I felt was better pictures than on day one. This one is beautiful, such a lovely background, really colorful, and the eyes are so detailed and in focus. And I love this photo for the composition. The butterfly was above me and I was so zoomed in at macro level that it created this ominous look. And then it happened. The mist went off. I zoomed in. I was so excited 
and this is what I captured. It was a lot better as far as the miss goes. However, if you zoom in, I totally missed focus. <laughs> oh my goodness, photography, it's not easy. But for me, that's the joy. The joy of striving for perfection, knowing it's unattainable, but along the way, we'll arrive at excellence. Dig. Seconds later, I snapped again, and finally, focus, boom but the mist was gone. What an amazing experience. Did I capture one perfect photo? Uh, no way. In fact, I hope I never capture what I think is a perfect photo because what's the point? The point is in striving for that elusive thing, for me anyway. And that was about it. I packed up my gear, I was about to head out, and then it happened. One more opportunity to shoot the perfect photo and this was probably as close as I got. It's not really the kind of photo I was looking for, but it sure was an amazing experience. I'd love to know what you think. Do you enjoy the colorful backgrounds or the really dark, moody portrait style shots? You know, for me, macro photography has been so rewarding. Click and watch this video on the screen now to discover how to capture more and better macro shots next time you go out. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you around.